Hello everybody, in this segment we're going to talk about how to uh, model a terrestrial 3D object using only images from our smartphone. Uh, so this can very easily be done if we pay attention to some of the strategies and processes of collecting the imagery. Uh, that's probably the most important part. So what you should do is, uh, first of all, think about what kind of an object you want to image. And again, make sure you've uh, thought about some of the elements we've talked about in our discussion on how to choose an object uh, and also how to collect those images for that object. So uh, take a look on D2, all that information will be up there. But you can see here I've chosen a, a just a park bench, a picnic table to model. And uh, what I've done is I've taken images all the way around the object. So I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I can see the top of it and, and the sides and I might have to take a couple of uh, uh, sets of images around the entire object. So uh, the higher overlap you have, the better, of course. Uh, and again, recall some of the discussion we had on collecting images. So there's two things that uh, I want to uh, make sure I, I grab when I'm in the field. Number one is the photos. OK, number two, you're going to need a couple of measurements. So uh, what I've done, what I did when I was in the field is uh, I just made a couple of measurements on my object. So I measured uh, along the top of the bench. So along that top part there from end to end, uh, we've got a distance of about 1.5 meters. That's what I measured that to be. And also I took another measurement across the top of the, the width of the bench there, and that's about one meter. So grab a couple of measurements off your object as well. Notice that I've also uh, initiated some uh, markers on the ground. You can also do that too as well. If you don't have any really easily distinguishable features on your object, maybe it's just a big rock or something like that, you can place some markers on the ground and measure the distance between them uh, that way as well. Okay, but may, you're going to need a couple of differences, uh, or sorry, pardon me, a couple of distances. So notice I've got... Uh, a couple of uh, targets, one here, one here, and then I've got uh, another one over on the other side as I, as I come around there. So I've got about three little markers on the ground. Uh, there's the other one on the other side. So as long as you've got two distances, at least two distances, you need the more the better, but uh, at least two, make a note of where those distances are measured from. And once you've got the images and your measured distances, then you can head back into the office and start processing the images. So again, I've got uh, about 20 pictures, and once I've got that uh, ready in my uh, distances, then I can start processing in Pix4D. So I'm going to open up Pix4D, and I'm going to start a new project, and I'll just find a spot to uh, store my project here. I'll throw it in my folder uh, called Bench, give it a name, and click Next. And then I'm going to add all of my photos. So make sure you go into that folder, grab them all, say open, and then click next. Now, uh, it'll give it a coordinate system based on your uh, camera geotagging settings. And uh, make sure you've got all of your images in the list here, and then go ahead and click next again. Now, uh, we're not going, because we don't have any ground control, we're not going to use a... Uh, coordinate system. We're going to use an arbitrary coordinate system or a relative coordinate system uh, just because we don't have any ground control. So this is going to be just kind of floating out in space. But the, the, the object should be scaled properly due to the measurements that we've taken. So the other thing you want to make sure your units are in the same unit that you measured in. So if you're measured in, in metric, uh, make sure your, your units are meters. Once you've got that set and your arbitrary coordinate system set, then we can go next. And we're going to pick out a template, and uh, what we will use is the 3D model template uh, that's provided for us. So this 3D models will uh, not provide us an ortho mosaic, but just a 3D model, which is what we want. So I'm going to select 3D models, make sure the start processing now is turned off, and then click finish. And that will compile my data. Now, in my uh, before I set up some initial processing, I'm just going to take a look at my area here. Uh, and notice you can also change to a map location if it's slow. Now, in my uh, map view, which I'm at, uh, there will be nothing in the ray cloud until you finish the initial processing. But in the map view there, I'm going to go down to the processing options. I'm going to turn off 
uh, steps two and three. I just want to run the initial processing first uh, by itself. So in the general tab, I'm going to make sure I'm using a full image scale to generate my key points. Key points mean uh, uh, tie points is what they mean by that. But a full image scale will keep that image at full scale, do a nice job of uh, stitching together those photos. And uh, in the matching tab, I'm going to make sure it's set to free flight or terrestrial and also turn on geometrically verified matching. This will help the uh, tie points generate uh, more accurately and it will also discard some of the uh, bad tie points that it makes by by accident. So make sure that's turned on. The calibration you can leave at the defaults, which should be both set to automatic, but uh, make sure the geometrically verified matching, free flight is turned on, and full image scale. And uh, make sure the other two checkboxes, two and three, are turned off. Then go ahead and say OK to that, and we'll run the initial processing first. If you don't see the start button here, then just click the processing button and that will pop up. Click start and uh, wait about 10 or 15 minutes uh, for about 20 photos in my case that's about how long it will take and then we'll check out the different processing options when this is finished all right everybody that takes care of this segment for the initial processing check out the uh, next segment on processing areas and scales constraints thanks for watching bye now